Hello and welcome to a tutorial on scope items. In this video we'll look at the essentials of scope items and how you can effectively manage them in Omega 365. First is the organizational structure, which mirrors the owner's organization structure. Data in Omega 365 is assigned to an org unit. Access to this data is primarily facilitated through roles within these organizational units. Next is the scope items. Scope items is a data structure for managing tasks and follow-ups. Simply said, it's stuff to do and stuff to follow up. All scope items have a process associated to it. Then it's the object structure, the target, a digital twin representing what the organization aims to construct or maintain. Lastly, it's the documents. The documents encompasses all necessary documentation required to construct and manage both the asset and the organization itself. It serves as a repository of knowledge and procedures for effective project execution and organizational governance. Next, I will explain how you can find the scope items in Omega365 and also how you can create your own. You start off here at the homepage of Omega365 and you click the menu button in the top left corner. Then look up scope items. As you get to the scope items register, you can click the arrow in the top left corner to see the two different sections. The section on the left is the details sections. Here you can see the, all the different details for the different scope items. On the right side is the scope items register. In the scope items app and the register, all the different processes are listed. In addition, there are dedicated registers for certain processes. Which registers can vary as registers can be configured per solution. As you press the filter button under process, you can choose which, which processes to show, like for example, meetings. As you start making your scope item, you'll be sent to this screen where you'll be asked to fill in some basic information. First, you will need to select which process you want. In this instance, we will select inspection. After this, you will need to fill in a title and also a description. On this page, you'll be able to upload files, like for example, pictures. But you can also do this later in the process. You can add an object. You can also add additional access or subscribers to also be able to go in and edit the scope item. You can also choose to share it with an org unit. After filling in all the required information, you'll be asked who should the workflow be sent to? In this instance, we will select me. As you get to the next screen, you will see four different tabs. The agenda slash checklist, the setup, participants, and objects. We will start here on the agenda slash checklist. In the first section, you will want to choose who's responsible, like for example, the manufacturer. For each section, you'll also be able to add a checklist from your library. As you select a checklist, it will appear on the right hand side. You can also then go into the menu on the right hand side and add other objects that you would like. After adding in the checklist, you can select the decision slash action, then which person this section is assigned to, and also the due date. After filling in all the information, press save and you can begin a new section. Again, you will need to choose who's responsible, and for each section you can add a new checklist that's different from previous ones. Like here, we'll add another checklist, and this one will be the engineer's checklist. Again, you add in the decision slash action, who it's assigned to, and also the due date. The next part will be the setup part. Here again, you'll see all the basic information you filled in in the beginning, but you can also choose to edit here. The next section is the subscope slash repeat setup. Here again, you can add a target process, like for example inspection, you can choose the repeat frequency, you can choose the first plan start and when to repeat. After the subscope and repeat setup, you get to the planning part. Here you can connect your scope item to a plan, you can choose the parent scope item. Here you can choose the plan start, the duration, the plan finish, when it's supposed to be completed and when it's closed. The last part of the setup is the completion. Here again you can add a new checklist. You can also select the location. For this example, you can select where the inspection is needed. You can choose a point on the map. 
for the one who needs to do the inspection to be able to see where it's supposed to be. The next tab will be the participants. Here you can add other participants either individually or from a group. Here you can choose if they're an admin, if they are read only, if they were present and if they need to sign. The last tab will be the objects. Here you can add existing objects from your org unit to the scope item. If you press the arrow in the top left, you can see a detail section for the different objects you add as well. You can easily remove the object by pressing the X at the end of your object. Depending on how the process is configured, the user interface can be different. In this case, we have a risk mitigating measure. Here, the steps to complete are shown in chronological order. The current step is clearly marked. Under Tasks, you will find various functions such as Edit Workflow Basis, Export as PDF, Uploading Attachments, Creating Related Workflow, or Copy Current Workflow. By clicking here, you can also mark the scope item on the map. That wraps up our tutorial on managing scope items in Omega 365. Having a good understanding of what scope items are and how they work will help keep your projects run smoothly and effectively. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.